Hello and welcome to the Legendary Chiropractor Podcast. I'm your host, Johnny Reuter, and this podcast is brought to you by TheLegendaryChiropractor.com, an interactive and immersive virtual platform for prospective chiropractic students, current chiropractic students, recent chiropractic school graduates, and even veteran doctors of chiropractic out in the field wanting just a little bit more from this profession. I hope that you enjoyed today's episode, and if you do, be sure to share with a friend, leave us a rate, leave us a review, and also be sure to subscribe to get more. Dr. Brad Blawacki runs one of the highest volume, highest profile, highest profitability practices in the world, and it's all run with vitalistic communication procedures. Those procedures from his office are then shared with other chiropractors at his various trainings as a part of Level Up Mentoring. This information is created, developed, tested, and then packaged simplistically before being taught. With bruises and scars from making mistakes, Dr. Glow always delivers refined content that is battle-tested and simplified for use on Monday. To level up your life and practice, head over to levelupmentoring.rocks. That's levelupmentoring.rocks. Cairo HD, superior cloud-based practice management software. Cairo HD is a user-friendly, all-in-one EHR solution built with one mission, to help you run your practice like a boss. Learn more at CairoHD.com. Total Clinic Solutions is your go-to source for purchasing both brand new and refurbished chiropractic equipment, as well as phone support for repairs and maintenance. Call Derek and allow him to combine your wishes and his 23 years of chiropractic equipment expertise to find what's best for you and your patients at 704-622-4089 or head to TotalClinicSolutions.com now. Thank you for allowing this brief disruption to take place. And now back to the program. Hey, hey, what is going on, everyone? Johnny here in the Legendary Chiropractor Free Group. Um, And I'm coming to you live today because we have a couple of important things to discuss in regards to national board exams for chiropractic students um, and recent chiropractic school graduates. Uh, So couple of things, right? couple of ground rules. As always, check out that link, legendarychiro.com slash go. Again, that's legendarychiro.com slash go. Join over 400 members that are actively on the platform getting chiropractic relevant content um, for students and recent graduates every single day there. So go check that out. Um, But enough is enough. (laughs) I want to talk to you today about national board exams for chiropractic students. Um, We're going to be talking about this for the next couple posts here. Um, But last time's live and last time's conversation and podcast episode was all about just how to study for national boards, when to start studying. And then now we're going to discuss on how difficult they are um, and rank them just based on personal experience and things that we know um, and that we've seen in the chiropractic profession so far. Um, but every, all, all things, as always, this is all opinion, right? This is advice if you choose to take it as advice, um, but it's very opinion-based because I don't want you to go and make you know decisions based on only what I say or live your life only to you know again what I say I don't think that's necessary so what's really important here to understand is that each individual is going to be very different in regards to national boards how you do on national boards and really how you're how you are at test taking Um, so my biggest thing, I'm going to start at part one, right? I was absolutely terrified. And like I said, in the last podcast episode, I was absolutely terrified of part one national boards, right? So it lit a fire underneath me, um, because I had no idea what to expect. I had no idea how the questions were going to be phrased. I didn't know what the multiple choice options were going to be. I didn't know how difficult it was going to be, et cetera, et cetera. So I went into part one super prepared, right? I went into part one, probably over prepared than most because I literally was like studying two quarters beforehand, which is six months, right? I was studying six months beforehand. I was, I read probably 
if not all, a majority of the chiropractic board review books that you could probably get your hands on. Um, so, I, I mean, I did it all, right? I, I read through every single part one book. Um, I studied them. I knew them. Um, but I knew that my difficult areas were going to be biochemistry, right? Um, and that was like the main one that was on the top of my mind always. It was like biochem is going to be challenging. And I always knew that. Um, because I, I don't come from a chemistry background. I don't come from a biology background. I come from an anatomy and physiology background and that's about it, right? Um, so when it came to biochemistry and, and putting um, pathways together and understanding where enzymes came into the, to the equation and just all of these different things and um, I really wanted to understand that information, however, um, I found it quite difficult to study because it was so just boring to me. It was so mundane. Um, so part one, I would say for me personally, part one was the one I was most scared about. Was it the hardest? I don't think so. Um, but part one was definitely like the biggest fear mongering test of national boards of the five United States national boards that we have to take. I think part one was the biggest fearful um, one that got the most attention from me personally. So what I did was I studied six months out. I took the test. I did well on it. Um, I passed it first time and it was it was good to do. Um, I did very well on it. But again, I was very fearful of part one national boards. Um, when part two rolled around, part two was interesting. Um, but I would say that Part two was probably the hardest just because of the philosophy section um, and it's written, right? So it's still multiple choice. You still have sections to the test. Um, but I went from part one being the last pencil paper exam co cohort to go through to part two where now all of a sudden we were on computers for the first time. Um, it was it was a very how do I put it? Rough transition for NBCE, right? Um, so com we were on the computers for the first time. We were taking part two national boards and uh, it, it's like, it, it just was kind of a nightmare. Um, but all things considered, I would say subject wise, part two national boards was the most interesting and the most difficult for me personally, because one, it's a written exam on the computer. Two, um, you still have multiple choice, but the the subject matter is now a little bit different and a little bit more clinically relevant, um, except for philosophy, right? So philosophy comes along and now we have the CCE running the philosophy questions and the NBCE putting together philosophy questions um, and those that sit on the board of the NBCE. And it, it gets pretty dicey in regards to what's considered philosophical in regards to chiropractic and what is not, right? Um, and you're trying to mix 17 to 19 different schools, philosophical beliefs and, and viewpoints um, into 90 questions, right? And it's just absolutely wild. So part two was interesting. Um, I would say for me personally, part two was the most difficult. Uh, I, I, I did about the same as I did on part one on part two. Um, but just subject matter wise, it was a little bit harder because now you're getting into more clinical, re clinically relevant things. Um, and then you, you roll that right into part three. So part three is now still clinically relevant stuff. SCED is the all in one system that allows for amazing control and flexibility of your scheduling. Yes. Your next new hire. Every aspect of when and where you service your customers is at your command. SCED is tightly integrated with your existing EHR system. This software was made by a chiropractor specifically for chiropractic. No joke. Go check out their latest care plan feature by heading to go.sked.life slash legendary pod. Easily share your passion for chiropractic and look good doing it with above down apparel offering a premium lineup of principled apparel that's impossibly soft, sustainably sourced, and chiropractic AF. 
Visit abovedown.co and follow them on Instagram to learn more and score yourself some sweet Cairo swag. Every chiropractic clinic needs a compliance program. If you are not sure what that includes or why you need one, let Dr. Robin from RHDC Consulting help you build your chiropractic compliance. If you are ready to get started, head to robin halemykajabicom and let Dr. Robin guide you to the end result. Thank you for allowing this brief disruption to take place. And now back to the program. But now you're applying it not only in multiple choice questions, but you're applying it in vignettes, right? Um, and vignettes are uh, different questions, different cases, and case scenarios based on clinical presentation of people, right? So it would be like Mary Jo walked in with blank, blank, and blank. Um, her labs are blank, blank, and blank. You know, what's her, what are her top three diagnoses? And then what are not only the top three diagnoses, but also what are you know, the top three things most commonly seen with this and the most common, you know, red flags that you should be picking up on with this, right? So you're going through this question and you're providing them with nine different answers um, to a, a case, right? And part three gets challenging. However, my biggest piece of advice for part three that if so, I have a lot of students that reach out to me for national board advice and just like, hey, you know, what's the best test taking strategy for part one, two, three, and four and PT, right? Um, and so I, I always say, and I always recommend, again, you don't have to take this with anything more than a grain of salt. It's just a, an opinion. Um, but my personal opinion on, on taking part three, especially the cases and the vignettes, is if you have a good idea of what the diagnosis could be, the end result, right? Like this person walks in with blank, blank, and blank, and you're diagnosing them with this, right? Go search for that condition um, in the in the th- in the questions, right? Because you're going to have three different questions that need three different answer choices marked for each one. Um, so you're providing them with nine different answers, but everything has to be cohesive, right? They're not going to throw in, and they haven't yet, um, but they're not going to throw in something that's like a double negative, right? That's like which one of the following is you know not this, but would apply to this way or, you know, some silly question like that. It's fairly straightforward in the sense of like, what do you think your top three differential diagnoses are? Um, what are the top three things that go with that main diagnosis? Um, and so on and so forth. So what you have to do is go find your main diagnosis in the, the multiple choice questions um, and answers, and then find the three things that you know and you studied your butt off to know that go with those things, right? Obviously they're getting further and further away from just like, um, I don't know, even an example to give you. Um, but even like, if you think of pageants, right? If you think the, if you think the answer is pageants, um, think of all of the different things that go with pageants, thickening of the cortex, et cetera, right? Then, Go find things that go with pagets in your answer choices. And if that's the home run diagnosis that you're going with, pick everything to do with that, right? Pick everything to do with that in regards to what the question is asking. That was another big thing that I wanted to, to emphasize for people is always read the freaking question because a lot of people just get that end diagnosis and then they're like, do 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 They answer those three, those three, and those three based on that one diagnosis but you have to read the question to understand what exactly they are asking you. Um, And and that's kind of the way to go about part three vignettes and case studies. That's my biggest piece of advice with in regards to that. Um, So check that out. Make sure you kind of understand how part three rolls. Um, And then part four, before part four, I took PT. So I did one, two, three, and one, two, three, and PT, and then I took part four um, about a month later. So I took part one and then I waited about probably like six, I think it was like almost a year before I took part two, three, and then PT within like a month of each other. And then part four was a month after that and then I graduated. Um, So part three, or part four, sorry, is live in person, but PT is fairly simple. It depends on your background of kind of what you come from. 
uh, from your undergrad experience. I came from a kinesiology background. I had a lot of friends that came from biology backgrounds. Um, so it really depends. Kinesiology only helps you out so, so much, right? You got to kind of pay attention in your PT classes, as unfortunate as that sounds. Um, you do have to listen in your PT classes because you have to know how deep ultrasound goes, um, what, when to do like soft tissue mobilization, what kind of techniques are out there for it and all of these different things. So just understanding that stuff and PT is kind of tricky in regards to, well, it's not accepted in all states, right? Or it's not necessary to take in all states or have, but they also phrase the questions in weird ways where you, you might not have, um, you might not have a, an answer choice that's correct. Okay. So, so kind of understand that you might not have an answer choice that's correct because what they're doing is they're trying to, especially with like, um, UV radiation and ultrasound and all of these different red infrared and all this stuff. What they're trying to do is un do you have a basic knowledge and understanding of how deep those different modalities penetrate the skin to get to whatever area it's going to, if it's a lig ligament or a tendon or a bone or fascia. Um, so the right answer might not be there, but you have to pick the second or third best answer choice um, in order to answer the question and what they're asking you. So PT kind of gets confusing and dicey in that regard, but um, you'll be fine with it. I, I did a review for PT I did a review for all of them, part one, two, three, PT, and part four. The PT review was the literally the day before, um, and and I was able to rock PT. So I, I highly encourage you to go easy on yourself on PT. You will pass, but just make sure that you put in the put in the time before the review. Don't just rely on the review and then just go take the test, right? Put in some work before that, go take the review, now you have a baseline understanding of things um, and that's about all the knowledge you need. Going into PT is about a foundational experience. Um, going into part four, now you're just putting everything together, right? You're putting everything you know that you've learned in chiropractic school as a soon to be doctor, you're putting all of that in one place. Right, so they're going to ask you questions about X-rays. They're going to ask you questions about diagnoses. They're going to ask you about questions about clinical presentation. They're going to ask you about supplementation. They're going to ask you about um, medication side effects. They're going to ask you about all sorts of different stuff in P in part four. Um, part four, I like to describe as Monsters Inc. for chiropractors, right? Because it's like just like Monsters Inc. when they go in. Dr. Stu Hoffman, founder and president of ChiroSecure Malpractice Insurance, is the foremost expert in both risk management and risk avoidance. Understanding the everyday challenges of today's practicing chiropractor and the current public perception of chiropractic has made ChiroSecure the fastest growing malpractice insurance program of the last 28 years. Find out more at ChiroSecure.com. Imaging Services' primary business is chiropractic solutions. With over 45 years in the industry of helping chiropractors, Michael Tokash offers free consultations on building your business. In the past year, Imaging Services has installed over 100 x-ray machines and digital x-ray systems in over 42 states across the United States. For more, head to theimagingservices.com. Thank you for allowing this brief disruption to take place. And now back to the program. And they scare, they scare the children, right? Like it's, it's a very real thing. Um, so you walk into the room and part four is, you know, you're, you're, it's taking place. You're standing outside, you're waiting the, you know, two minutes or minute and a half before you walk into the door. And then you walk into the door, you introduce yourself, you give you, you give yourself the in introduction that you need. And then you're like off to the races, just like doing stuff on acting mod, uh, actors that are paid to be there to perform different tests positively and negatively. Um, and it's freaking hilarious. Like if you, if you walk into part four, Imagining it being just like Monsters, Inc., 
you'll just crack up when you're done or going through the test. You'll just be like, this is hilarious. Like this is Monsters, Inc., right, for adults and chiropractors. Um, and so part four is really interesting in that regard, but it's a lot of fun um, walking into the rooms, getting to know the people, getting to know the cases, understanding kind of what's going on with them and being like, oh, damn, you know, like I could, I'm going to be a chiropractor, right? Like I'm going to be a doctor and walking out of rooms confidently like, heck yeah, like I, I would have rocked that adjustment or, you know, I would have rocked that, you know, rotator cuff tear injury, right, in my office. Um, and part four is really, really cool. So I, I highly encourage you. I studied my butt off for part four, but I we had fun with part four. Um, and about two days before, my, my horror story about part four is about two days before going into OSCEs, which are were halfway through – um, before we were going to take part four. So about, I don't know, three months out from taking part four, about a actually it was about a month and a half before taking part four. Um, I, we took OSCEs a month and a half earlier and two days before taking OSCEs, which are clinical exams that Life University does, um, that are mini part fours, right? To see if you're clinically able to go out into outpatient clinic and if you're clinically able to go out into your community and do a, the peak program, right? Um, so <laughs> it, it's really funny because I had a sinus infection, um, a, a bacterial sinus infection in my right maxillary sinus. And I had never gotten a sinus infection in my life. I, and as I'm studying for OSCEs, right, you're thinking of all of these different diagnoses. And now all of a sudden, like I wake up one morning and my face hurts. It's my face is just killing me right and all of a sudden I'm like what in the world is going on with my face what is happening to me I have trigeminal neuralgia like I I something is wrong with me right I'm having a stroke like it, it was insane so I let it sit for about probably a full day and a half before I went to the emergency room the night before Oski's and got Anti uh, antibiotics because it was so <laughs> terrible and I needed to pass I needed to pass Oski's but I couldn't even like stand um, because of the pain so I was like I when I would blow my nose it would be like the color of a plant leaf like it would be that dark and green and mucusy and thick it was so nasty and it hurt.